Welcome to Training Unleashed, the show that will help you design and deliver training that's off the chain and will make a difference. Now, here's your host, Cordell Riley. Hello, welcome to Training Unleashed. I am your host, Cordell Riley. My pleasure to welcome our listening audience today. It's also my pleasure to welcome our guest, our guest of honor is Halali Azule, who is the CEO of Talent Grow. Halali, how are you doing? I'm doing fabulous, Cordell. How are you? I'm doing awesome, doing awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Halali, why don't you do our audience a favor and tell them a little bit about yourself, who you are, the group that you represent, what you do, and all of those great things. Um, I like to say that I'm a leadership development strategist because I enjoy focusing on topics that relate to leaders, leadership, and developing leaders that people actually want to follow because we've all had the bad managers and leaders that did not inspire us to follow them. And I'm trying to put an end to that, not an end to those people, just an end to those bad skills. (laughs) My company's talent grow, right? Because I once said that I'm putting an end to it. And the person's like, what are you doing to those people? Like, no, no, that's not what I meant. Uh, (laughs) uh, My company is talent grow. We're based in uh, California, but actually moved here from the DC area three years ago. So my company has an identity crisis about where it's based and my clients are everywhere. So it doesn't actually matter as long as I'm near an airport. Um, Consulting on leadership development strategy and approach for companies, as well as speaking at corporate events and meetings and facilitating workshops of all uh, types and lengths focused on leadership, communication skills, emotional intelligence, and lately a lot about networking awesome awesome so leadership I clearly hear that I hear facilitation workshops um, sessions that you're facilitating speaking all of those great things and so obviously Halali our audience is training experts and they're obviously looking to learn and hear tips and tactics about how to make their training more effective so obviously you're out speaking you're consulting you're advising I assume there's some degree of training that you're doing as part of this. What do you do to make your training effective? Absolutely. I mean, it's actually my industry. You know, training is the profession I selected when I came out of my, of my graduate uh, program back in the early 90s and have been, my entire career has been pretty much in training and development, workplace learning. So it's what I do. And, you know, I've learned and continue to learn and, ex- and expand my understanding and improve my skills over the years. I think we're always a work in progress. And uh, one of the things that I know for a fact is that uh, training is most effective when it's adhering to the adult learning principles as well as definitely learner-centered. Learner-centered. Um, what does that mean, Halali? Well, what I mean is sometimes people fall into the trap of um, either sticking with the plan they created even when it's no longer working and they can tell that it's no longer working, or some people fall into the trap of um, really trying to prove themselves, you know, like they, they, especially I think this happens when people are early in their career and they feel somewhat of an imposter syndrome, you know, they feel a little bit... Uh, intimidated or are, are maybe they're low, low self-confidence and are not sure that the learners will see them as credible experts. And so sometimes when they try to build up their credibility and establish their dominance in the classroom, in, in a workshop, they can take it too far and become sort of the preachy sage on the stage. I can never be wrong. This is my show. It's all about me and sort of lead the training in a way that seems to be about aggrandizing themselves instead of helping the learners learn. So I think those are mistakes and I definitely try to avoid making them. We're so glad you're listening to this episode of Training Unleashed brought to you by Tortal Training. The difference between Tortal Training and other online training companies is we are primarily a training company with technology rather than a technology company that does training. Want to find out more? Just go to tortal.net. That's T O R T A L, tortal.net. 
Well, Ali, we may come back to that in a second, but I want to go back to something you said as you were talking about kind of your background and you chose this after you got out of school. And something you said that I think is really, really important, I want to get you to address that a little bit, is you talked about improving your skills and that we're a work in progress. I completely agree with that. I think we all need to be sharpening our saw every now and then. What do you do to you know, improve your skills and work on your progress from a training perspective? How do you go back and sharpen those training skills for yourself? Yeah, it's so important. So one of the things I discovered early on in my career and I'm thankful for is our professional association uh, now called ATD, Association for Talent Development, what used to be ASTD. And I discovered them as a resource for information about thought leadership in the field and um, like research, uh, leading experts give talks, uh, speak at conferences, but also they have a magazine, they have lots of resources on their website. So I tapped into that uh, since then, and I still do. And also, I found that the local chapters of this association, um, most cities have a local chapter, and they're a great opportunity for you to connect and network and learn from other people in the same industry that are or in your geographical area. And I think that is such invaluable learning because not only can you learn from, you know, let's say if they have a speaker, okay, fine, you learn about the topic and you learn about the content from the speaker. And that can be about, you know, instructional design or facilitation skills or some technology that you can use in the classroom or, or, or ways to do e-learning, whatever it is. But you can also learn from other people. You know, you can create a wide network of people that you're connected with that have uh, similar interests or a similar career, but are somehow different. You know, they might be in a different industry than you. Like maybe your company that you work for is in manufacturing and they're over in retail or in financial services. And so they see things a little bit differently. They might be exposed to different uh, trends and competitive factors that you're not. So it allows you to be more aware and um, have a broader understanding. So that has been one of the greatest sources. But I will tell you, Another and very different way that I've continued to, uh, I mean, there's a million ways I've continued to learn, but another really important one actually is the opposite of that, which is, you know, if you go to your own professional uh, industry and association, that's good, but you should also be connecting and learning from people and reading uh, from resources or listening or whatever, however you like to learn, from resources and people that are in other fields completely, like people that are not in training that are not in learning, um, that, are, that are thinking about things from a very different way. Because that, again, allows you to broaden your perspective and horizons, to be exposed first to things that maybe people within your industry don't even know about. And it allows you to connect the dots. I think that that helps you become much more value-adding in your work than if you were just to stay siloed in your, in your area and in your um, profession. Great suggestions, Hal Ali, and I'll just go back and uh, maybe add on a little bit. We are huge proponents of ATD. We think it's a great, to your point, industry association for people to get involved with, and I love your thought about getting outside of your industry as well, so great um, great tidbits there. I want to go back to your learner-centered for a second. You talked about, yeah, I kind of got an agenda. I know what I'm, I've planned out. I know where I'm going to go with this but it's not right for this audience. They know something. I don't know what it is, but it's not right. How do I move that? I've come, I've prepared this. Now I'm getting ready to do it. How do I switch up on the fly, Halali? How do I do that, you know, standing there in that room with the audience? How do I, you know, make sure that it's focused when I already got my day planned out for what I'm getting ready to do here? It's it's really very hard to do, right? It's a very challenging um, conundrum. There, there's a famous saying, I don't remember who it was, I think maybe Eisenhower, but I could be getting this wrong that I like, which is uh, plans are worthless. Planning is everything. So the fact that you have a plan, you should not be tied and married to it and execute it regardless of what the facts of the, of the situation are. But the fact that you have taken the time to plan and practice and think through what you think is the best order or what is the best content actually puts you in a good position to be able to shift and flex and veer from that plan, especially if you don't have that mindset of this is what I plan to do and I'll do it by, by darn and by golly and doesn't matter what 
what the situation is like. So if you're willing to be flexible, the fact that you did all that thinking also put into your mind a bunch of options. Um, plans B would be something that you would actually be smart to plan out. But you also have other ideas, maybe things that you didn't put in because you didn't think you had time or rejected or things you used in other situations similar to the one you're faced with. So you can then rely on that cash day of knowledge of, you know, sort of the, the things that are part of your um, you know, like in your bag of tricks and pull out from them what you think in the moment is most appropriate given your judgment and your assessment of, of the situational needs, of what the situation dictates. So the more experience that you have, of course, the more you have in your bag of tricks for sure. But even inexperienced people can expose themselves to multiple options as they're planning so that they don't feel rigid and tied to a single unit, unit um, single plan, and that's all. Training Unleashed is brought to you by Tortal Training, specializing in e-learning and interactive online training solutions for corporate, government, nonprofit, and franchise organizations. Tortal makes effective training easier. Just go to tortal.net to gain access to real-world tools that can make a difference. That's tortal.net, T-O-R-T-A-L, tortal.net. Halali, as I was preparing to talk with you, I went out and looked at your website. And if anybody has not done that, I would certainly encourage them to do. And we'll make sure we put your information up on the screen for people to be able to go out and take a look. But I was looking at one of your testimonials from one of your sessions, and they used the word engaging speaker, engaging. I love that word, engaging. So if I'm trying to make my training engaging, and maybe I'm going to take you back to some of the things that we've already touched on, but I thought that was a great word. How do you go about earning those types of comments from the sessions that you lead and deliver? Wow. Well, thank you. Actually, it's funny because when I looked, uh, I did an exercise at some point to see how do I, how do I differentiate myself? You know, what are some of those things that I can, that are selling points for me as a, you know, maybe different from others. And that word came up a lot. So I was like, oh, I have something there. I wonder what that is. And then later I tried to deconstruct what makes engaging. In fact, I, I wrote a, I wrote a, a PDF called 10 Tips for Being a More Engaging Facilitator, and I'd be happy to give it to your audience if they're interested. But let me, let me give you a couple. So what does engaging mean? It means that you're drawing people in, right, and that they feel like active participants in the experience. They feel vested. They feel interested. Um, they feel uh, active rather than passive. So let's try to think about that. At a little more specifically. For example, if um, you think about how do I create an, an environment or an, uh, an experience that allows people to be hands-on, you're already creating a more engaging experience than if it was just sort of one directional passive, right? So earlier I was talking about adult learning principles. Adult learners need to be actively involved in the learning, not just passively sitting there. So that's one way to be engaging. Another way to be engaging is also related to something that I said earlier when I was saying it's a mistake. It's that idea of being um, approachable. So if you are really focused on being seen as the expert and establishing your credibility and letting people know that you really know your stuff and you're really great and they should listen to you, you're in some ways creating like a wall between you and the learners and it makes you feel to them like you're not approachable that you're not a, a, a peer that you're not someone that that they can relate to because you're separating yourself like you're putting yourself on a pedestal in fact literally people who stand up on a pedestal or behind a podium are literally putting a barrier between them and the learner I never do that I will unless you make me force me I will never stand behind a podium or even when I speak at ATD, I get off the stage, you know, the riser, I get off of it and I, and I speak and I walk around within the audience. Why? Because if people feel like you're one of them and you are there for them and you're their peer, I mean, you don't have to lower yourself down or your expertise, but you don't have to prove it to the point that you're establishing distance. So that makes them feel more comfortable to ask questions. It makes them feel more like they're part of this and that you're with them you're on the same team rather than on two 
separate ends of the spectrum. So those are just a couple of ways that you can become more engaging. I have more tips, as you know, but I'll pause here because I'm talking so much. <laughs> I was taking notes, Halali, <laughs> and I was hoping you would keep going. You, you struck a chord with me with that podium. I love that, and we could probably do a whole nother podcast on that because I think not having that mm. barrier between you and your audience is a great point, but uh, great. Halali, I want, did I hear you say that you're willing to share this with our audience uh, if they are so inclined yeah. to want it? Okay. We'll make sure yeah, we Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. We'll make sure we uh, find a way to, again, get that link or something as part of this so people can download it. But thank you for that. That is awesome. Oh, you're welcome. Halali, I truly yeah. could keep going on and on and on. You've shared some great things. This has been awesome. Uh, I've enjoyed it, and I'm sure that our audience as well um, has as well. I want to throw it back to you. If you, We've talked about a lot of great things, but if you had to kind of leave us with one major tip to talk about training, taking it to the next level, making it more effective, what would you like to leave our audience with today? Um, whenever I approach a, a situation where I'm imparting learning or I'm, in, I'm responsible for guiding, facilitating learning, I think of myself indeed as a facilitator. And so that means that my goal, my objective is the, the learner's outcome. Right? What, am, what do I want them to accomplish? What do I want them to have by the end of that experience? And then make everything about reaching that out that objective. I mean, we all know about learning objectives. We say those words, learning objectives. But I really focus on that with my intentions, with my heart, if you will. And so that helps guide my decisions in the moment. So for example, um, there are three things that I want to accomplish. I have a half day program. There's only so much time for this, 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 this. I've created interactive activities and so forth. And I have a moment where I have to make a choice about whether I share one other story that I have in my bag of stories or I move us into this next activity where they get involved. Well, I love my story. It's a great story. And in fact, if I had all day, it would fit. But I need to focus on, well, what's my outcome? What do I want them to accomplish by the end of the entire time that I have? And will that story be adding and taking me closer to achieving that goal, especially knowing that if I tell that one more story, I'm cutting into the time of that one other activity about that, that other goal, that other topic that I had. So like whenever you're making, because you, as we talked about before, you're always making decisions in the moment because things are rarely flowing exactly according to your plan. That helps you make good decisions, in my opinion, because you're, that, that's back to that learner-centered. How can I make sure that I help them get what they need from this experience. So I believe that people appreciate that. You know, they, they feel like you're there for them and that causes them to become even more engaged because they're bought in. They, they feel that you want that for them and they appreciate it and then they kind of play along with you. They're less combative, less confrontational if they were ever even inclined to be that way because you're on the same team and their goal is your goal. Wow. Awesome. Amazing. Beautiful. Thank you. Great, great close out. Well, Ali, thank you for the time. This has been indeed a pleasure. I'm sure that our audience has taken lots of notes from this. So it was a pleasure having you on. I also want to thank our audience for joining us today for this episode of Training Unleashed. Please continue to come back for additional episodes. We're going to make sure we get Hallie's uh, contact information and the link or the ability to download those uh, tips that she was talking about, about engaging. So we'll make sure we get that up as well. So I want to say thank you all and have a great day till the next time. Take care. Bye-bye. This has been Training Unleashed, but it doesn't stop here. Just go to trainingunleashed.net to subscribe to the show. That way you'll never miss an episode and you'll be well on your way to delivering training programs that are off the chain. We'll talk to you next time on Training Unleashed.